Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and welcome back to the Understanding FreeCAD series. We're looking at lesson one, which is about part design workflow. So this lesson is built up with two videos. So in 1.1, we looked at drawing a sketch, adding constraints, and then using the pad in the part design workflow. So we learned how the workflow works and creating geometry and importing geometry. And we looked at how to auto constrain and remove redundant constraints and how to get around some errors with certain over constraints and under constraints. We're now looking at part 1.2, where we're gonna create the same piece, where we're gonna actually edit that piece and include a pocket rather than a pad to produce one of those features. When we look back at that piece and look at the original one we did, they will have different arrangements of faces. We will then put those models through a process called refinement, and we'll see that we have exactly the same piece. As said in the previous video, we're looking at a very simplified CNC piece and we'll be starting from that model. So if you haven't already looked at that video, that just shows you how to actually create that piece. And then we'll continue this piece in this video. If you like these videos, please subscribe. I also have a Ko-Fi or Coffee donation page and a Patreon where you can get extra content. The links for those pages can be found in the video description. Any kind donations will be reinvested back into the channel and to span that further in the same subject matter to bring more quality, quantity and to fund some future projects that I have in mind that I only can do with your kind donations. So let's have a look at another way of how to create this. We're only using pads at the moment. That's introduce a pocket. I'm going to go back to my last operation, which was this pad here. And we're just going to hit delete on there. You can see we've still got the sketch here. That's sitting on top of here. We're going to come into this sketch and I'm going to delete this inner circle that runs in here. Hit delete, click on the green circle, hit delete. You can also delete this circle in here as well. So this is the reference that we pulled in from the side of this piece. We look over on the left hand side and look down. We can see we've got the elements here. We've got a circle, two circles. and one's in a purpley color. And we can see down here, we've got the purpley color circle here. Look at modes, go down to external. We can see that circle is sitting there. So we click, we can see that circle is external geometry and it's sitting in the mode external on the elements. So this is linked to the external edge that's running around here. We can click on that or click on it over here and hit delete. That removes that reference to external geometry from there. Let's go up to the top and hit close. So now we've just got a circle that runs around here. I'm going to do the same for the other sketch. So if we come into the pad, we can see there's another sketch in here which is our bottom sketch. I'll just press the space bar on here to show it. Double click that sketch to come in and I'm gonna take this circle and again, click on it and hit delete. That removes that circle from there. Let's hit close. So now our pad has taken effect without the inner circle removed. We're gonna come in to this sketch and actually create a pad from that sketch. We can see an exclamation mark above that. We look at the support, it's saying pad face 13. If we hover over the face, we can see it's saying pad face 12. That's because the pad that was just deleted created a face in here. That was face 13 that we connected this sketch to. So our support is no longer there. We can fix this by coming in, clicking on the icon at the end, and this will bring up our linking window. Move this to the side. We can get to our object and our link window at the same time. Hit clear, that will clear out the link. And then we can select this face. And we can see face 12 has now been selected. Hit okay. 
our sketch has still got an exclamation mark against it but we can see there's a little tick on the body that means if we go out to edit refresh that will refresh our tree view and our sketch is no longer in error so the little tick means something that needs recomputing or refreshing click off we can see we're all fine there there's no exclamation marks there's no refresh needed our last known as the tip action is still this pad with this sketch in here we're going to just press the space bar on that sketch to hide that sketch just close out we have got this sketch now that's attached to this face I'm going to click on the sketch and use the pad or part design create additional feature and pad and that will create our pad in there and set that to 20 and click and we can see that's updated there I set this to 50 and click let's move that up 50 millimeters but we haven't got a circle that's been extracted out of here we haven't got the hole that we originally had for that we're going to hit OK and now we're going to hover over the top this face we can see down the bottom it's saying pre-selected free CAD sketch lesson one dot body dot pad zero zero one face 15 so this is face 15 which I'm going to click on and then come up to the create a new sketch and that's added that sketch to that face if we click on model click on the sketch you can see the map mode is flat, flat face and the support is face 15 go back to tasks now we can add our circle like so hit escape to get the mouse pointer back click on that circle and set its radius or set the diameter let's set that to 100 millimeters hit close now we've got our third sketch that sits on top so we come in we can see this pad we've got a sketch which was the bottom this pad which has a sketch which is this part here that's been padded up and now we have a sketch which is this, this inner circle here we're going to use the pocket now now this is a subtractive feature and it's also available from part design create subtractive feature pocket you can see that's pocketed through five millimeters at the moment so if we put some angle on there using the mouse and the alt key because i'm on the touchpad control this will differ depending on what control you're using you can see that's been pocketed in there it's created a subtraction of that space there come into the type drop this down and go through all that will pass it through the whole of that feature there it's gone through this sketch and the bottom sketch the strugens from those two or the pads right out through the bottom hit ok we've now created our part in a different matter come over to the pad I'm just going to click on that sketch press the space bar just to hide that so we've learned how to use the pad and pocket here it's created the same part the only difference is that we've got different arrangement of faces so you can see before we used to have two faces in here now we've just got the one but the construction is still the same. We've still got the same part at the end of the day. So now I've placed these two parts side by side and we can see the differences. And we looked at different ways of creating these, one with just pads and one with pads and pockets. And we can see we've got the same part, but created differently. Here's in side by side. So the only difference really is the amount of faces it's created because we used a pad and a pad on this left hand piece and a pad and a pocket through all on the right hand piece they are both the same dimensions they do both the same functions the only difference is the amount of faces that we have 
when it comes to print, then this won't matter. And we can show that by coming into the body, coming into the last pad, and I'm going to come down and set my refine to true. And do the same with this piece. And come down, last operation, last action. Down to my refine, set that to true. And we'll go back to these. And as you can see, now I've done this, we have got this refine down. So refine removes faces. So you can see that we used to have a face that ran along here. And now if we look at both parts, you can see they are identical. There's no difference whatsoever between these two parts. So we've built them in different ways, but the end product is still the same. We've still got the end product. We now got the same amount of faces because we've used the refine. The refine removes connecting with faces. So this piece that ran along here connected and we did a refine and it actually removed that piece. The same with the inside of here. We had a face that ran along here that followed this line. And you can see the refinement has taken out this face, made this as one, and it's removed the face in here. So that's the end of lesson one. Please join me in lesson two. We'll be looking deeper into the part design workbench and extending our learning further. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.